We want to talk about the actual Oscars for a minute before we get into Rick's reviews. This morning on Sunrise, our entertainment expert, Rick Bentley, gave his predictions for the top winners at the Academy Awards. Right. And so you can watch the whole interview on our website, but I wanted sure, to hear right. your quick highlights. Yeah, quickly, what it comes down to is in the past, we've seen a lot of small films like Coda mm -hmm. and Moonlight and everything. And people go, I didn't, you know, these. Movies I've never seen get win. This year it's going to change. Okay. And I think Oppenheimer's going to be the big winner, certainly taking Best Picture, probably two acting awards. And then I think they're going to honor Barbie a little bit by giving the, the, that film a lot of production, the costume design, production design, and probably the song of the year, and not the Ken song. The okay. Other, it's the other one by... Uh, Billy Elliot. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Okay, uh, Billy Eilish. Billy Eilish. Billy right. Eilish, yes. And so or then, Billy Elliot. Hey, you yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> and then Best Director, because both Barbie and Oppenheimer have such accolades in that, yeah, in that yeah. category. Yeah, I think, you know, I'm, I'm leaning toward Christopher Nolan simply okay. because I believe it should be automatic. Best Picture, the okay. director gets it. Yes. But the only thing that could throw a curve on that is Martin Scorsese. You know, there's, this, there's a sentimental connection to him. Mm -hmm. He's not getting any younger. And uh, Killers of the Flower Moon was an excellent film. So even if if he won, it wasn't like, oh, we're just giving to him out of sympathy. Right. So, so, but I still think Christopher Nolan's going to take the director. Okay. I, I'd love to see Scorsese get it because he's one of those yep. with a lifetime of incredible achievements. He yeah. doesn't have that one best dressed director award. Yeah. And it, it, it's one of those, you, you go, really? Right. You know, and there's names through history. You go, I can't believe that. You know, and then you get some people who go, that person has a, okay. yeah, so, right. yeah. Either way, I'm a huge Christopher Nolan fan too, so it's fun. We're yeah. going to be watching along with you on Sunday. On Sunday. But before Sunday, if you need something to do with the kids this weekend, I love that you're uh, pre not previewing, reviewing. Reviewing. Kung Fu Panda 4. You know, and I, I've always said with sequels, mm -hmm. it's like Xeroxing, you know? <laughs> right. The, the second one is faded and if you Xerox that Xerox it gets worse and worse so by the time you get to number four usually the, the sequels are pretty weak Kung Fu Panda 4 <coughs> is that rare exception of I think it may be the best of the bunch really and what it's done is it's taken the original story of, of Poe as voiced by Jack Black uh, who's the dragon warrior and kept that alive but they've moved it into a bigger city and so that gives it more architecture to deal with more characters to deal with they stripped away all those those sidekicks he had. I thought there were too many with right. Mantis and Tigris and all that sort of stuff. And given him one sidekick, a fox who's voiced very incredibly by Aquafina. Oh, okay. And so, and then we get to, act, as you see in this clip here, the action sequences here are the kind of action sequences you normally would see in like a Transformers yes. movie. Yes. It is constantly moving and, and uh, it is just a film that on every level, even the music, Hans Zimmer did the music and, and Zimmer has done so many great films. But I I want to point out to the adults who take their kids, mm -hmm. there's a fight sequence in here. You're going to hear a, a song that sounds very familiar. And what Zimmer has done is taken Crazy Train and done it as an Asian melody. Ozzy Osbourne's Crazy Train? Yes. Fun. And it is just, you, you, about halfway through you go, that's Crazy Train. <laughs> And, 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 but it's it just it fits the moment. Cool. Uh, everything about this works. The animation is great. The only qualm I have mm -hmm. is that the action is so intense. I don't know if this is good for young children. Okay. I do think there's a, there's a creature at the end that's very scary, mm. and there's like three little cute bunnies in it that start out very cute and cuddly and become killers. Oh, my girls hate that. Yeah. Well, and so these are the kind of things that I think young young children are going to be scared by. Okay. So that's my only qualm. So you just have to judge your own child. I can't tell you what your child's going to be afraid, scared by and what they're not. But to be aware of that. So that's my only slight qualm with this. That's good to know. So with that, what is your grading for the number four in the series? A B plus. Really? It would have got, got an A minus if it hadn't been that little scary part. But scary. B plus is still good. Rick, this is just fantastic. All right, thank you so much. All right. We enjoyed doing this with you. Again, his Oscar predictions are up on our website, kgt.com.